it's Cinnamon Cooney, your Archer Ripa, and I'm so excited to be able to tell you about the Stencil Mini Set. This set is part of my Art Sherpa brush collection that I did in partnership with Silver Brush Limited and is a really fun tool that you can have in your studio for creating a couple really great scumbling techniques, some snowman if you've been watching the show, and also to stamp and stencil in some other techniques that you might be using in your multimedia or crafting as well. They're a really fun tool. So behind me, I have my Art Sherpa pop-up shop and I'm gonna go shopping with my hand for some stencil minis. Oh, this is them right here. Now they're pretty shiny in the package, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take them out of the package so I can show them to you. In this video, I'm gonna show you some techniques that you can do with these if you have them or you're thinking about getting them and wondering what they do. And also I'm gonna show you some care tips on how to clean them, care for them, and preserve their longevity. All right, I'm gonna see you at the pallet camp. Okay, so right here I have the stencil minis, and these are a number six, a number four, and a number two. And if you look at their heads, you can see they kind of come in three diameters. And really what they're gonna let you do is have a variety of shapes and sizes. Now these are bristle brushes, and as you know, I think it's a good idea to always take a bristle brush and wash it vigorously before you paint with it the first time, because any bristle brush, and bristles mean it comes from a hog, they're hog bristles, right? Um, they're handmade, they're hand put in, and there's always gonna be some looseness, so it's always good to work your fingers through these and pull any loose brushes, bristles, any loose bristles out, the other thing I want you to think about is shedding. So a brush should shed a little bit when it's a natural bristle brush, but not a lot. Like you should not feel like this is a winter coat coming out in summer, right? It should be a few hairs, some reasonable craftsmanship stuff. So that's just something whenever you're shopping, any kind of bristle brush to be thinking about. Now I'm gonna show you some techniques that you can do with these, and then I'm gonna show you how to clean them, okay? All right, so I have some heavy body paint out here and I have my bristle brushes. And one of the things that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get them wet. I don't like to put this particular brush in water ever above the ferrule, right? I don't, I think that this brush is double crimped and it's glued and it's everything, but I find I just prefer to just not let these soak in water in the jar because I don't think it's good for them. And I'm going to take the extra water out of my bristles because I don't want them to be sopping wet because I want them to be able to stencil nicely. But you're gonna find that when you put water on your bristles, it just softens them a smidge because when they're a beautiful stencil like this, they can be really scratchy, which is great when you want it. All right, I'm gonna load up some of my yellow heavy body paint. You can see that loading. And I'm gonna load up some of my red here at the corner. You can see I have that nice thing. And I'm gonna come over to my stencil this is a fun stencil, and if you watch the show, it has a really great history. And I'm going to just tap this brush and scruffle and scumble this brush in, and I'm gonna try to make sure that I am coloring the area in the stencil. So you can do this up and down if you want like that spotty kind of technique, you can scumble around. But that's what these are for, these do stenciling, right? I'm gonna just get this in here and go around, tap in, whichever is your feeling in a nice little circle. But you can see that this is coming in and coloring my stencil very, very nicely. So what this brush has is it has authority. In other words, this brush takes paint, even heavy body paint, any pigment, and it puts it where you put it. That's its purpose, right? It's a bossy, bossy brush. And sometimes in acrylic painting, you want your brushes to be a little bit bossy because you want to be able to tell the canvas what you're doing, why you're doing it, and where you're putting the paint. And you can see I'm not struggling. I'm not working overly hard to get my effect. And come back in, and you can see it blends very nicely for me. I can go any direction. The brush doesn't catch, it doesn't pull. It doesn't fight me. And that is a really, really nice thing. Let's pull this and see how we did. So you can see that leaves my stencil pattern 
beautifully on my canvas. And believe it or not, this has effects and applications across many, many different art practices. Fine art, crafting, paper, card making, art journaling. These are a really cool tool. I use them. I really enjoy them for some fun techniques, but I just think they're a fun tool to have around the studio. I'm going to show you some other little scumble. You might have seen me do these effects where I create like backgrounds using the circular motion where I'm scumbling, scumbling, scumbling in a background and I want to create kind of a fade, right? And you can see how I can get this beautiful, beautiful blend and it really takes just hardly any paint and puts it anywhere I want to on my canvas. I can also just dab up and down and a heavy amount of paint. If I want to do this type of work, you can see I can get this nice kind of scratch effect. You can always, of course, use any side of your brush. And just remember every tool, right, you can pull down. Every tool has a purpose, right? And just because you've seen a tool just used like one particular way doesn't mean you can't try a brush stroke. Try something now. now now that you understand what these brushes do and why you might possibly use them, I want to show you how you can get all this paint back out of them so that they last for a really long time for you. So I'm going to show you some tricks that I have and give you some advice on how to improve the life of your bristle stencil brush. So I have here some of the tools I use to take my brush to the spa. Whenever I take my brushes for cleanings, I like to say that I take them to the brush spa. And one of the tools I like on my brush spa is my brush soap. This is the Master's Brush Cleaner and Preserver. And what's nice about this is it works very well for both a synthetic and a natural uh, hair in a brush. So you can do a synthetic filament or natural hair. I've got a little water here to clean. You'd be losing using a sink. I've got a paper towel to make sure the pigment's out and I have a pegboard as my special tool that I like to use in my brush spa. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rinse my brush out and try to get the pigment out. Right? And you can see there's a lot of pigment in that brush. I'm doing it in here because again I don't like to get the water over that fair it doesn't like explode or anything. I just think it, you know, is going to wear the brush out very quickly. And so I try not to just soak it in that water. If I can avoid it. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to swirl around getting the soap up into my brush. Now you can see because this brush is so stiff, it pulls up a bunch of soap. I don't generally need to do much more. And then I'm going to take it over to my beadboard. I'm just going to go back and forth. This is going to pull out any loose hairs that I had missed at all. And it's also going to make sure that none of this acrylic, none of it is going to just stay in my brush. And I like to make sure that I'm pulling these out, if there's any, and I'm going to come back and rinse, 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 making sure that the soap's out. Now, whereas I often reshape brushes, I don't really need to like specifically reshape this brush, right? I might just do this a little bit, but what I will do is lay this flat, always flat. Listen, don't dry your brushes while they're still wet facing up because all the residue is going to get down into the ferrule and it's going to build up and it's going to destroy the shape of your brushes. And if you ever do make a mistake and accidentally leave paint on a brush or soak it, know that sometimes even when a brush looks like it's the end of its days, it's actually still really repairable. I have a kind of goofy video about that, but they're really good tips on fixing your brushes and you can find that in the iCard in the description. Anything you want to know about these brushes at all, you can always find on my website and in the description. And listen, this is a fun tool to show you. And if you're looking for a way to stencil or to scumble or to dry brush or to participate in some of my videos, it's a great tool to have. But I want you to know, don't feel pressure to have to get any particular tool or canvas or paint or some product to be an artist. There isn't magic in tools. The magic of creativity and the ability to create art only comes from one place. There's only one unique place that's super essential that you've got to bring to every painting, and that is yourself. So as long as you're showing up for every painting, you're going to do okay. These are just wonderful tools that I'm super proud to be sharing with you. I really hope you've been enjoying the paint journey. Be good to yourselves. Be good to each other. And I want to see you at the easel really soon. Bye-bye.